Hello to all the viewers. I am Dr. Sharda Ramdas, Professor in the Department of Food Service Management and Dietetics in Avinashlingam University, Coimbatore, Tamil Nadu. I think you are clear on the last module on peptic ulcer. Now, shall we go through the next module on gastritis, which is closely associated with the problem of peptic ulcer. After going through this module, you will be able to understand the various types of gastritis such as acute, chronic, non-erosive and erosive gastritis. Learn the causes, symptoms and preventive measures to conquer gastritis. Outline the principles in treatment and diet therapy in gastritis. To, be to begin with, let us know the meaning of gastritis. Generally, ITIS indicates inflammation. So, gastritis is nothing but an inflammation or injury of the gastric mucosa. An inflammation, injury, irritation or erosion in the mucous membrane lining of the stomach may be caused by food infection or bacterial infection, allergy or some drug ingestion. As a response to injury, white blood cell move to the wall of the stomach. We knew the meaning of gastritis. Let us see the different types of gastritis. There are mainly two types of gastritis, namely acute and chronic. What is acute gastritis? The slide shows that acute gastritis is severe erosive and occur suddenly, lasts for a short time. The mucosal cells are damaged or cells may be missed. Look at the right side of the slide. It shows that chronic gastritis may occur gradually, progress slowly, but prolong for longer period of time. Gastritis may be a sign when the person is affected by pernicious anemia or peptic ulcer or stomach cancer. Chronic gastritis may be primary or secondary. Shall we see how they occur? Primary chronic gastritis may be developed when there is poor or irregular eating or fast eating or worry or mental disturbance at meal time. But secondary chronic gastritis may occur if an individual is affected by other existing diseases like ulcer, cancer, diabetes, gout, anemia, nephritis, cirrhosis, problem in proto-circulation, cardiac problem, swallowing infected sputum or pulmonary tuberculosis. Thus, inflammation is formed due to other diseases in secondary chronic gastritis. Chron chronic gastritis is often directly attributed to dietary indiscretion or indirectly to toxic substances. Nevertheless, it may also occur in the absence of any known cause. Besides the primary and secondary chronic gastritis, there are other types of gastritis. Let us go through one by one. First one, acute stress gastritis. This occurs after surgery in critically ill patients. Severe trauma and stress to the lining of stomach may develop stress erosion. Next, superficial gastritis or surface gastritis. It is the initial stage of chronic gastritis. Inflammation is mild only at the surface of the stomach lining without affecting deeper layer. Do you know pan gastritis? Inflammation is observed in entire part of the stomach lining which indicates that gastritis is everywhere. The next one, bile gastritis. This is a stomach inflammation resulting from bile produced by the liver leaking back into the stomach. If not treated properly, the acidic fluids will keep eroding the stomach lining over time and can even reach the esophagus and cause heartburn. 
Next, antral gastritis. It is the inflammation which is taking place in the antrum at the lower part of the stomach that is the part that releases the contents of your stomach into the intestines. Next, duodenal gastritis. It is inflammation of the duodenum which is the part of the small intestine located just below stomach. Now, now we shall move on to atrophic gastritis. Atrophic gastritis occurs as a result of prolonged chronic gastritis. In atrophic gastritis, hypochlorhydria or achlorhydria are common. Hypochlorhydria is the diminished secretion of hydrochloric acid in the stomach, whereas achlorhydria is a condition where there is absence of hydrochloric acid, but there is still gastric juice and referred as gastric anacidity. Gastric atrophy is the end stage and may lead to gastric cancer. Next, toxic gastritis occurs due to ingestion of a corrosive substance like acid or poison. Other than this, there are less common gastritis or granulomatous, eosinophilic, lymphocytic gastritis. We have been talking about gastric acid and gastric juice. Do you know what is gastric acid? Gastric acid is referred as hydrochloric acid or in short form HCl. The parietal cells in the lining of the stomach secrete hydrochloric acid. The pH can be as low as 1.5. When food enters the mouth or start smelling food, body produces hydrochloric acid. Hydrochloric acid helps to break down the food chemically in the stomach and the process of digestion begins in the stomach. If too much of acid is produced in the stomach, it causes pain and need medication to inactivate the production of HCl. So, shall we see the role of hydrochloric acid in stomach? The inactive enzyme pepsinogen is secreted by the gastric chief cells of the stomach for protein breakdown. Hydrochloric acid converts the inactive form of pepsinogen to active enzyme pepsin. The enzyme pepsin helps in the digestion of protein by breaking the bonds linking amino acids, a process known as proteolysis. Now you are clear about gastric acid and its role. Now let me tell you what is gastric juice. Gastric juice is a combination of mucus, hydrochloric acid and pepsin. Gastric juice mixes with food and produce chyme. This is released into the duodenum for further digestion. There is an interesting animation you can watch how hydrochloric acid is produced in the stomach. Hydrochloric acid is produced in parietal cells through a complex series of reactions. Carbon dioxide diffuses into the parietal cell and the enzyme carbonic anhydrase catalyzes a reaction between the carbon dioxide and water to form carbonic acid. Carbonic acid dissociates into bicarbonate ion and hydrogen ion and the bicarbonate ion is transported back into the bloodstream. An ion exchange molecule in the plasma membrane exchanges bicarbonate going out for chloride coming in. The hydrogen ions are actively transported into the duct of the gastric gland and the negatively charged chloride ions diffuse with the positively charged hydrogen ions. Potassium ions are counter transported into the parietal cell in exchange for hydrogen ions. The net result is production of hydrochloric acid in the parietal cells and its secretion into the duct of the gastric gland. Hope you got an idea how the gastric acid is produced in the stomach. Now we must know the causes of gastritis. The foremost common cause of gastritis is infection. The infection may be due to bacteria, virus and parasite fungal infections. Other factors are food poisoning due to toxins of bacterial origin that is salmonella, 
Staphylococcus, Uremia, Syphilis. Toxins due to metabolic origin, use of certain medications, stress reaction, pernicious anemia, bile reflux, gastric irradiation, heavy metals, consuming too much of strong alkali or acid foods. Next, faulty dietary habits such as taking highly seasoned foods, eating too fast, eating when too much tired, eating when psychologically affected, consuming foods that are allergic or sensitive. The next slide also shows that excessive consumption of alcohol, too much use of tobacco, drugs such as salicylate, phenylbutazen and intake of corrosive substances are leading to damage of lining of the stomach and cause corrosive gastritis. It is also observed that male population are more affected by gastritis than female population. So far, we have seen several general factors responsible for gastritis. Do you know the causes for acute and chronic gastritis? Number 1, the Helicobacter pylori, shortly termed as H. pylori bacteria, is responsible for both acute as well as chronic gastritis in the stomach mucosa. Look at the picture. Initially, the infection of H. pylori affects the stomach mucosa which affects the antrum. This results in the prevention of secretion of acid producing cells and become acute. If it prolongs and progresses, infection may continue and end up with chronic gastritis and last for longer years. There are two types of H. pylori gastritis namely non-erosive and erosive H. pylori gastritis. It is believed that Non-erosive gastritis caused mostly by infection which occurred in childhood. Symptoms of H. pylori gastritis include abdominal pain and reduced secretion in the stomach. However, the majority of patients with H. pylori infection suffer no symptoms. But sometimes ulcer symptoms include dull, gnawing pain after 2 to 3 hours meals and pain in the middle of the night when the stomach is empty. Coming to erosive gastritis, use of painkillers especially non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs is the next common factor for chronic gastritis. The drugs such as aspirin, phenoprofen, ibuprofen and naproxen used as painkillers are responsible for gastritis and peptic ulcer. Other than the infection and drugs, erosive gastritis are also due to alcohol, corrosive agents and inclusion of foreign bodies. In, in chronic gastritis, there are type A and type B. Type A chronic gastritis is also known as autoimmune gastritis. It is asymptomatic. Fundus of stomach is mainly affected in chronic gastritis. In this condition, there may be inadequate secretion of intrinsic factor from the stomach cells. We are aware that in the absence of intrinsic factor, absorption of vitamin B12 is prevented and causes pernicious anemia. Coming, coming to type B chronic gastritis, main part affected is antrum and the lower end of the duodenum that is pylorus. It is symptomatic. The common symptoms are poor or lack of appetite, heartburn after the ingestion of food, nausea, vomiting and a sour taste in the mouth. Coming to pathology, three states of chronic gastritis are usually considered. They are simple catarrhal, hypertrophic gastritis and atrophic gastritis. In simple catarrhal type, an increased amount of mucin is secreted. This is mixed with the food which is taken and may be vomited or may be passing on into the intestine and be digested. The mucous membrane may be grayish in color and usually shows small hemorrhagic area 
especially near the pylorus. The second pathology state is hypertrophic gastritis. It is characterized by changes in the mucous membrane with overgrowth of the muscular and connective tissue walls of the stomach. The walls become so thick and the contraction of the newly formed connective tissue so profound that the lumen of the stomach is greatly diminished. The intense multiplication of muscular and connective tissue lessen the elasticity of mucous layer of the stomach, interfere with the circulation of blood and probably exerts more or less of a pressure effect upon the nerve plex and nerve endings. The third category is atrophic gastritis. This represents the terminal stage of chronic gastritis. The surface of stomach is smooth, glistening grayish like a thin sheet of connective tissue, but generally the stomach is let in the form of a thin, smooth, dry, inelastic bag which forms no secretions, originates no sensory impulse nor is capable of reacting to any nervous stimulation. Following this, we should be familiar with symptoms of gastritis. Now, let us talk about symptoms. For many people, there are no symptoms in gastritis. Gastritis is diagnosed only when examine the samples of stomach mucosa for other suspected diseases. However, burning sensation, sometime vomiting, stomach upset, loss of appetite are noted. In severe cases, blood vomiting and tarry black stool are observed. We can see some more symptoms in the next slide. Depression and uneasiness, epigastric discomfort, intermittent or constant gastric abdominal pain, heartburn and feeling of fullness, loss of appetite, abdominal bloating or blenching, nausea, vomiting, weariness, reluctance from food, problems in discharge of urine, in severe cases hemorrhage may be seen. Sometimes diarrhea, dyspepsia that is indigestion, hiccups, but there may be individual differences in the symptoms. What are the complications of gastritis? The complications of gastritis may occur over time, especially if gastritis becomes chronic and not treated. Complications may include peptic ulcer, bleeding ulcer, anemia, gastric cancers, lymphoma, gastric scarring, strictures with outlet obstruction, dehydration, renal problems and even death. We have to do some diagnosis test. The first one is that presumptive diagnosis test can be done based on the symptom of the patients. History of previous diagnosis and treatment of gastritis, alcohol in ingestion and use of non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Following presumptive diagnosis, tissue biopsy test, upper endoscopy, stool test, blessed tests are undertaken to diagnose the presence of gastritis. All these diagnosis methods are already discussed clearly in the previous module on peptic ulcer. Hope you are very clear about that. So, so now let us deal with the treatment. What is the treatment for gastritis? It is a need for an individual with gastritis to reduce gastric acidity by including antacids. Hot foods and spicy foods can be avoided to prevent the stimulation of excess acid secretion and irritation to the stomach lining. If H. pylori is the cause for gastritis, physician may prescribe antibiotics and acid blocking drug to control heartburn. Removal or neutralization of the offending agent by gastric lavage, antibiotics, withholding of food for 24 to 40 hours to allow the stomach to rest and if severe vomiting, replacement of water and electrolyte losses are crucial. 
after one or two days small amounts of clear fluids are administered with gradual progression to soft easily digested foods. Vitamin B12 or an deficiency and gastritis. Deficiencies of vitamin B12 and iron will not cause gastritis or gastroesophageal reflux disease. Since the acid plays a role in absorbing nutrients such as iron and vitamin B12, an acid deficiency can easily result in a nutrient deficiency. Therefore, it may be desirable to give iron and vitamin B12 supplements. Moreover, vitamin B12 is helpful if the patients with atrophic gastritis are affected by pernicious anemia. Vitamin C and beta carotene given in combination appear to be beneficial to most patients with chronic atrophic gastritis. The enzyme bromelain present in pineapple has anti-inflammatory properties which helps to reduce the irritation in the stomach. But pineapple juice rich in acidic is not preferable for gastritic patients. Avoid self-medication and consult the doctor for stopping or changing of medication for the effective recovery and treatment. What is the prognosis of gastritis? It is possible to recover from gastritis. If the patients are affected by short term symptoms, it is imperative that by knowing the causes, if appropriate treatment is given successfully, gastritis patients can recover. With careful effort, the development of bleeding ulcer, obstruction and cancer and the prognosis of individuals with chronic gastritis can be protected. How gastritis is prevented? By following suitable measures, the causes of gastritis can be controlled by which the occurrence of gastritis can be prevented. If the gastritis is by infection, it is essential to follow hygienic practices such as preparing food hygienically, washing hands thoroughly using soap before eating, consuming healthy foods and drinking adequately boiled cooled water or fluids stored in clean vessel so as to reduce the risk of being affected by gastritis. When the gastritis is by the ingestion of NSAIDs or alcohol, avoid consuming these items to prevent the health problems. The, la the last aspect of the module is dietary management for the prevention and control of gastritis. Look at the slide, it correctly points out that correct faulty dietary habits should have a relaxed atmosphere at meal time, include adequate calorie intake of soft or bland foods, 4 or 6 meals feeding of meal is preferred. Once symptoms have abated, progression to a normal diet may be made. Limit or avoid the following, beverages like hot cocoa and cola, foods that contain chocolate, spicy or high in fat may also irritate the stomach, whole milk and chocolate milk, peppermint, spearmint tea, regular and decaffeinated coffee, green and black tea with or without caffeine, drinks that contain alcohol or caffeine may also cause symptoms. So, these have to be avoided. Coming to spices and seasoning, seasoning such as pepper increase stomach acid and may irritate the stomach. So, avoid black and red pepper, garlic powder and chilli powder. Other foods, dairy foods made from whole milk or cream, highly seasoned high fat meats such as sausages, salami, bacon, ham and cold cuts. Tomato products such as tomato paste, tomato sauce or tomato juice need to be avoided. Avoid refined and processed food such as white flour and pasta. Avoid refined sugar. Use unrefined sweeteners including honey and maple syrup. Reduce the intake of red meats. Repeated use of fats and oils are noted in deep fat fried items which may release 
trans fatty acids. In order to prevent the intake of trans fatty acid, avoid fried items like chips, french fry, onion rings and commercially prepared baked items like cakes and cookies. Avoid pickles, peppers, spicy and very salty food products. Avoid vinegar and food made using vinegar. Soda. Soda damages the stomach lining since it is carbonated, caffeinated and found to be acidic. University of Maryland Medical Center recommends that all carbonated drinks can be avoided to get relief from the symptoms of gastritis. But very small amount of bubbly beverage occasionally without filling the stomach can be included. So far we have seen the foods that need to be avoided. Now let me explore the foods which are preferable and included for the gastritis subjects. Watch the slide and include the following. Flavonoids inhibit the inflammatory activity. So, the growth of H. pylori can be prevented by flavonoids. Flavonoids containing foods like apple, blueberries, celery, onion and tea can be consumed. Peanuts, broad beans, spinach, strawberry and gova, the antioxidant food can also be included. Protein rich foods like legumes, fish, nuts and seeds are advocated. Eat plenty of antioxidant rich foods such as fruits and vegetables. Foods like almonds, broccoli, dark green leafy vegetables and raisins are rich in calcium and vitamin. So, these can be eaten liberally. Include the natural source of fresh tender coconut water for curing gastritis. Practice exercise in your routine. Since exercise is good for healthy living, every day walk for an hour. To, conclu to conclude, if you can adopt healthy lifestyle pattern with regular exercise and good eating pattern by including adequate antioxidant foods, avoiding carbonated and caffeine containing beverages, alcohol, acid foods, spicy foods and deep fat fried foods or trans fat. Follow relaxed atmosphere and adhere hygienic practices in preparation of foods. It is possible to protect the individual from the sufferings of gastritis problem which in turn prevent the incidence of peptic ulcer also. Thank you for watching this. Next, the related topic on platelets will be dealt. Till then, bye to everyone. Thank you.